Welcome once again, my friends, and thank you for stopping by to listen to an old storyteller. Today we have a story from Turkey, and the title of this story is The Three Hares. Once upon a time, or so they say, there lived three baby hares who dwelt with their father and mother in a deep and narrow hole. When they were just a month old, their father called them all before him. My little ones, he said. Pay attention to what I am going to say to you. The three little hares pricked up their ears and began to listen very carefully. You are now, said their father, quite well grown. This very day of your first month of life is at an end, and your second month is beginning. Tonight or tomorrow your brothers will be born, and this hole of ours is narrow. We cannot all take refuge in it. Each of you, therefore, must go out and dig his own run and make his own nest. It is the custom of hares. Your mother and I, when we were a month old, also left our father's home, but settled somewhere very near to us. Let us keep close to each other. Father Hare, when he had finished his talk, went away and left his children alone. For a while they talked about what they should do, and then they said goodbye to their mother and father came up from the hole, and left it. The first little hare said to himself, he said, I am not going to stay in this place, or dig any such hole. That dark, drain-like den of father's simply made me sick. I have had enough of it. The weather's lovely, too. I shall build a beautiful little cottage in the nicest place I can find, somewhere near the woods and the meadows, and there I shall live. Whenever I like, I shall go out and eat my fill, and I shall sit and look out of my windows and enjoy myself. So this little hare did just as he said. He collected leaves, moss, sticks, brushwood, and tufts of bushes, and whatever else he could find, and piled them up and arranged them into a lovely little house. Then he went inside and settled down. Presently he felt hungry, so he went out to look for food. And while he was sitting in a meadow, a fox came up to him and said, Hare, hare, little downy hare, stop, let us talk to each other. Don't run away from me, I won't hurt you. But the little hare answered, Fox, fox, cunning-eyed fox, you would like to catch and eat me, but you shall not. And with these words away he went, leaping and bounding into his house and hid himself. But in a few minutes the fox was there and had pulled down the house and had eaten the poor little hare. Scrunch! Munch! Such was the price this heedless one paid for his folly. The second young hare likewise said to himself, I know what I shall do. How tired I have grown of a life in dark lairs and dens. Now let me make a nest for myself in the roots of a tree. And he, too, did just as he said he would do. He carried twigs and straw and moss and scraps of everything that he could find to the roots of a tree, crept inside, and sat. When he began to feel hungry, out he came to find some food. And while he was grazing in a meadow, along came the fox. Hare, hare, called the cunning-eyed fox. Little downy hare, don't run away from me. I mean no harm to you. Stay, let us talk to each other. This put the little hare into a fright. Fox, fox, cunning-eyed fox, he cried. I know well enough what you are after. You would like to eat me if you could, but you'll never catch me. And off he ran, leaping and bounding into his nest. But when the fox saw the nest, he began to laugh. Hare, hare, silly little hare, he cried. Now you shall see. I am going to eat you up and swallow you down in a single gulp. In a few minutes he had torn down the nest of sticks and straws and had eaten the poor little hare, scrunch, munch. And so this one, too, was lost by his own foolish act. Alas! He had not stopped to think that homes made like birds' nests are of no use to hares. The third little hare said to himself, I shall dig a hole somewhere near my father's den, but I shall make it deeper and longer than his. 
Then I shall get inside it and make myself at home. So he set to work at a great pace, and day and night he dug. In a few days he had made a winding run, which was deep and long and safe. And when it was finished, he went inside and hid himself. As soon as he felt the need for food, he came out again and went to a field. And there, sure enough, he met the fox. To this hare, too, the crafty fox called out, Hare, hare, little downy hare, do come and talk to me. I won't hurt you. But this little hare was wiser than his brothers. Fox, fox, cunning-eyed, sharp-nosed fox, I know your tricks, said he. Do you think I didn't hear that only yesterday you gobbled up one of my brothers? But you won't catch me. And straight away off he ran leaping and bounding, and so into his narrow, twisty lair, and sat. Along came the fox, but try as he might, he could not get into the hold. He waited a while, but at last he had to take himself off, and that was the end of him. And this is how the third little hare proved himself cleverer than his brothers. From all foxes, dogs, and hunters, May he live safely forever. Thank you once again for listening to this story. If you enjoyed this story, please press that like button. Also, please help an old storyteller out by subscribing to my channel. The next story will be posted in a few days, so until then, may your story continue to be a good one.